It's just after 1 p.m. on September 19, 2011. On the ground at the Socorro, New Mexico airport, a mechanic hears a loud pop and looks up. An airplane is approaching from the east, wings rocking from side to side, seemingly struggling to stay aloft. It turns right, rolls level, and then turns back left before abruptly nosing over and plunging to the ground. The story that ends with a burnt-out hulk next to an interstate on-ramp begins two days earlier in Mississippi, where a pilot and his son are in the process of buying a new Century Aerosport radial rocket, an experimental amateur-built aircraft. It's a hot rod of an airplane with a 400-horsepower radial engine and a maximum gross weight of just 2,500 pounds. The pilot, however, is not unfamiliar with high-performance aircraft. He owns a Yak-52 with the same engine and has logged over 4,000 hours, many of them at the controls of a twin beach. The aircraft seller, also its original builder, has set aside several days for a thorough checkout, but the new owner is on a tighter schedule. The three men spend a few hours examining the aircraft and reviewing its systems. Then the builder and pilot take it for a half-hour flight. They practice various flight maneuvers, though not stalls or slow flight, and the builder later reports that the pilot is smooth and coordinated on the controls. During a post-flight review, the pilot expresses concern about complicated mixture control and boost pump procedures, as well as difficulty reading airspeed and altitude tapes on the digital instrumentation. Still, he feels comfortable with the aircraft and decides to depart that same afternoon. After an uneventful flight to Dallas, father and son spend the night in a hotel before setting off on what will be their final flight. In approximate sense, this accident likely resulted from the pilot's improper operation of the aircraft's fuel system. When that led to a loss of power at low altitude, he became distracted and allowed his airspeed to decay perhaps in part due to difficulty reading the instrument. He then failed to respond to signs of an impending stall. The ultimate cause of the accident, however, has more to do with overconfidence and a hurry-up mentality than it does aircraft systems. The pilot had experience with the same engine in his Yak-52, but the Yak had an automatic mixture control. In contrast, the rocket was very sensitive to mixture and boost pump operation particularly during landing. A mistake could cause the engine to stumble or even briefly shut down, as was made clear during his abbreviated checkout. Had the pilot simply taken more time to learn the nuances of the fuel system, to become more familiar with the flight instrument display, or to explore the low-speed handling characteristics of the aircraft, he and his son might be alive today. As an aside, it's worth noting that the seller offered to ferry the airplane to the pilot's home field and provide a checkout there. The pilot would have been wise to accept this offer, not only for the benefit of training at a familiar airport, but because it would have removed any pressure to rush through training and get home. This case provides an object lesson in the need for a thorough checkout in amateur-built aircraft, even, or perhaps especially, when the purchaser has experience in a similar type. Experimental amateur-built aircraft are custom creations. Knowledge of one airframe, or as in this case, one engine, may not translate to similar aircraft, and it's dangerous to focus on similarities while downplaying differences. The price can be much steeper than a few more hours of instruction or an extra night in a hotel. <laughs>